Greetings, Internet. This is Lathe26. I'm here to talk about the printer interface for the Intellivision keyboard component. In this video, I will talk about what it is, give a demo of it working, discuss the hardware internals, printer compatibility, and some of the remaining unknowns. For background, the keyboard component was the original hardware that upgraded the Intellivision gaming console into a home computer. The printer interface itself was an upgrade that plugged into the back of the keyboard component that also attached to a specific model of printer. The printer and the printer interface were sold together by Mattel Electronics as an accessory to the keyboard component. Unfortunately, I don't have a functional compatible printer to demonstrate the printer interface with. Instead, this demonstration will use an LPT post-diagnostic card hooked up via a breadboard. This device simply stores and displays the bytes sent by the keyboard component through the printer interface to the diagnostic card. The printer interface is mostly compatible with the diagnostic card. When the keyboard component powers up, it detects that the printer interface is attached. It sends the byte sequence of 001E0D. Note that sometimes the diagnostic card misses the 1E byte in the middle due to timing differences between standard LPT ports and the printer interface. To start sending our own data, first we type in B to enter BASIC. Next, the user types in PRT1. This tells the keyboard component to send text from programs simultaneously to both the screen and to the printer. When the user types this in, it sends a single byte of 0A. A byte of 0A means line feed to a printer, so the printer would advance the paper up one line to start the next line of printing. Finally, to actually print something, we're going to type in a short basic program. The program is simply 10 print double quote 01234567289 double quote. Type in run to execute the program. When it executes, 12 bytes are sent. The first byte is 30 in hexadecimal, which corresponds to a zero in ASCII text. In other words, the byte of 30 would be printed as a single zero. The second byte is 31 in hex, which corresponds to printing a one. Since the program prints text from zero through nine, this pattern continues up to 39 hexadecimal. After these 10 bytes, two more bytes are sent. Both are 0A, which corresponds to two line feeds. So what's inside? Well, it is fairly simple. It just uses some 7400 series parts. Some of these chips decode addresses. Other chips implement three simple registers. One of those registers latches the data being sent to the printer. Only seven bits of data are sent at a time. The other two registers are a status register and a control register. The schematic is provided in the links below. For the techies out there, they can pause the video here to see details on the registers. The three registers have been partially decoded based on the schematic and by reviewing the 6502 assembly code for the keyboard component. This decoding is not perfect. It is likely that corrections will be made in the future. Of particular note is bit 6 of the status register. It is tentatively understood that this bit is read by the keyboard component's built-in driver code to detect whether the printer interface is plugged into a back expansion slot. This is why this bit is hardwired to zero by the printer interface. The printer interface was sold with a thermal printer, which means that it used a special paper that reacts to heat to create the letters and images. The printer supports 40 characters or 280 pixels across the width of the paper. The printer was badged simply as Mattel Electronics. However, both the printer and the printer interface were manufactured by a company called Alphacom. In fact, the printer is simply a rebadged Alphacom printer called the Sprinter 40. In Mattel's advertisements for the printer, the badge was different from the actual Mattel printer badges. The advertisement's badge looks suspiciously like the original Alphacom Sprinter 40 badge. The differences are that the S in Sprinter appears to have been erased, 
and a Mattel electronic sticker was placed over the word Alphacom. Alphacom adapted this same printer for a variety of 1980s computers by swapping the printer interface for other adapters to support the Radio Shack TRS-80, the Apple II family, the Atari 400 and 800, as well as adapters for both standard Centronics and serial connections. For example, to connect the Sprinter 40 printer to an Apple II, an Alphacom card was installed that connected to the printer's ribbon cable. Based on known printers, as well as text from various Alphacom printer manuals, there were several printer variants. The Sprinter 40 printer had three variants. The early version, the later version that had a firmware update to add more features, and the third variant that was made specifically for the Commodore PET computer. The Sprinter 40 was superseded by the Alphacom 42 printer, which is similar in both appearance and functionality. There were also three variants of this printer that Alphacom made. The early variant of the Alphacom 42 was the only one that was still compatible with the printer interface for the keyboard component. The later Alphacom 42 switched to a different type of adapter that used recessed cartridges to support different computer interfaces. The last variant was the Alphacom VP42 that physically had the old style edge card connector used by the early 40 and 42 printers, but the firmware was modified to only support the Commodore 64 and VIC-20 computers. While the Sprinter 40 manual and the Alphacom 42 manual go into details for the previous computers, they only tersely mention the printer interface for the keyboard component. They merely state either that it will soon be available or is already available. While I do not have any of the printers that are compatible with the keyboard component's printer interface, I do have a loose circuit board from a Sprinter 40. It closely matches the schematic in the printer's manual, but it does have some differences. It is very likely non-functional since the printer mechanism is all bent and the rest of the board is in rough shape. One interesting side note to mention is that the mechanical part for the paper feed and thermal head were from a company called Olivetti. This mechanical part was used in another Mattel product, the Mattel Aquarius printer. This means that the same thermal paper used by the Aquarius printer can also be used by the keyboard components printer. There are still some unknowns to be uncovered in connection to the printer interface. The first major unknown is whether graphics could be printed by the system. As demonstrated earlier, it is known that text printing is supported. Both of the compatible printers have a graphics mode, and the printer interface itself has enough bandwidth to support this mode. The main question then becomes whether the keyboard component itself supported printing graphics. Most likely, this will involve reverse engineering the keyboard component's built-in ROM code. Another unknown is what does the three-byte initialization sequence mean? Across all the manuals, the first byte of 00 is only mentioned once, and even then, only very briefly. In both the Sprinter 40 manual and the Alphacom 42 manual, it is not described in the main section that describes what bytes can be sent to the printer. Only in the Sprinter 40 manual, it is simply listed as the single word of reset in the character set table at the end of the manual. The second byte of 1E is not documented anywhere at all. The third byte of 0D is unclear, though by itself it typically means carriage return. Yet another unknown is that the keyboard component also supports a different initialization sequence. If one of the bits of the status register is a 1 instead of a 0, then a 1-byte sequence is sent instead of a 3-byte sequence. This 1-byte is simply the byte 00. zero. Given these two unknowns, it appears that the keyboard component may have supported multiple printer-like devices, at least during the keyboard component's development. Okay, after recording most of this video, I got in contact with one of the extremely rare folks who own an original, official keyboard component printer, complete with the original manual. Several discoveries were made. Rather than re-record multiple parts of this video, it is simpler to just add the updates and corrections at the end here.
From reviewing the material, the official printer appears to be a new variant that is called the SP40. While the SP40's name sounds similar to the Sprinter 40, this printer contains a blending of features that place it in between the Sprinter 40s and the Alphacom 42s that are compatible with the printer interface. There are several comparisons that can be made between the SP40 and the other compatible printers. First, its edge card connector has the same pinout as the Sprinter 40 printers. Second, the underside label is patterned after the Alphacom 42 printers. Third, same as the Alphacom 42 manual, the reset byte of 00 is not documented in the SP40 manual. Fourth, the SP40 manual's cover is patterned after the early Alphacom 42 manual. Fifth, the dip switch settings are more similar to the Alphacom 42's dip switch settings. However, the form feed setting is absent, similar to the older Sprinter 40 printers. Additionally, unlike both the Sprinter 40 and Alphacom 42 printers, support for serial connections was either completely removed or serial support was simply undocumented since the keyboard component does not support serial printers. That said, the phrase serial data is oddly documented for the pinout of the SP40's edge card connector. Last and most complicated is that control code bytes are a blending of what the Sprinter 40 and Alphacom 42 support. Notably missing from the SP40 is the graphics control code. Thus, contrary to what was stated earlier in this video, it is not known whether graphics could be printed by the official printer hardware. One possibility is that graphics support was completely removed from the SP40, even though this ability was in both the Sprinter 40 and the Alphacom 42. Another possibility is that the printer hardware did support graphics, but the manual deliberately hid this fact to avoid confusion. My educated guess is the latter was the more likely scenario. The basic programming bulletin formally documents that graphics printing is not supported at the present time. The phrase at the present time implies that graphics support was intended to be added later on. If the printer supported graphics but it wasn't documented, then only the basic cartridge ROM would need to be updated. Conversely, if the printer itself didn't support graphics, then updating the printer would be complex and expensive, or alternatively, it would be expensive to replace the entire printer. All of this is just supposition on my part. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you made it this far in the video, you're almost as weird as I am. I salute you. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you next time.